welcome back to another video on converting the 105 series to an FTE. Today we'll be touching on what's involved in wiring an FTE up in a HZJ 105 series. I was lucky enough to find an entire 100 series front cut locally. Now, if you're not so lucky, some of the things you're gonna need are obviously the FTE wiring harness, you're gonna need the ECU, you're gonna need the spill valve controller, uh, and then possibly the dash loom or a conversion loom, which we're gonna to touch on later. Now, depending on what gearbox you're using, you might need to save some of your original loom. Uh, I'm using a manual with the FTE auto harness, so I needed to swap that manual wiring over to the new loom. This is just mental. <laughs> Absolutely insane. All right, so for accelerator pedal, we've got just two bolts. There's one down there under that spring, and there is one up in there. And once they're undone, you should be able to pull the whole thing out just like that. There you go, so just one up the top, one down the bottom, and that's your accelerator pedal out of the 100 series so then really it's just a matter of of those two bolts there which i guess will be 10 mil as well and we'll be taking the cable accelerator out and putting the electronic accelerator in And in classic Toyota style, the mounts for the new accelerator pedal are already there, just hidden. So you just have to take out two of these little foam circles. The bottom hole is your bottom mounting, and the top one you're gonna have to drill a hole and put a bolt through. Now, a lot of you who have gone and watched um, some of my previous videos would know that I am a huge high performance diesel fan. HPD is based in Adelaide. Um, they were, I think they're still at Edwardstown in Adelaide down in South Road kind of area. Um, they just make fantastic products. They have great service. Um, Carl and the gang there have just been fantastic to us over the years. I run a HPD intercooler on the HZ or did. Dad runs one on the FTE and uh, they tuned this bus when it was a HZ, they tuned dads and did a heap of work to that. And they're just great to get along with. Pete runs the social media at the moment, I believe, and just does a fantastic job at keeping it alive. And really they engage with other four wheel drive enthusiasts and they do, you know, shout outs and giveaways. Um, they're just fantastic. Now, this time in doing some research on this conversion, I came across Performance Diesel Intercoolers website. There was a lot of amazing, really helpful information on an engine swap, specifically 105 series to FTE. So I went through PDI for a lot of my gear this time, including a plug and play harness, which should make the electrical side of things a lot easier. Now, I can't go into much detail in the instructions here because it is PDI's information and I paid for it and it would be disrespectful to them to go and give all the information away. But I will give a bit of a snapshot to what goes on electrically. 
because it is confusing. And for anyone who wants to do this conversion, it's, it some might be the scariest part. I know it was the scariest part for me. It's the scariest part for a lot of people. But these instructions are fantastic and they go through and characterize, sorry, they itemize each, each loom. You have to go and whether things are gonna stay the same, change or be removed. And they do this for pages and pages and pages and pages and there's diagrams. So it's gonna be extremely helpful. So go check their website out as well because I think that this is going to make the job so much easier this week. So there's two relays you'll need to get your hands on and one of them is the EFI relay and there's a spot for that in your HZJ fuse box. The other one is your EDU relay and that will go into the mirror heater um, spot in the fuse box if you're using PDI's conversion loom. So in the first part of their loom, there's a few wires you'll need to splice into or replace pins with under the fuse box. This first part of the loom will also connect to your EDU and then it goes back to the glove box. Righto, so now we've got our, um, our second kind of PDI loom here. So those are ECU plugs. So we'll be feeding across this part of the loom here to sit on the pedal. That's the pedal plug there. And obviously a couple of other things that go over there as well. So basically feeding this back behind the um, AC controls and over to the pedal. So with this PDI loom, our main focus is this plug back here called the IN1. So this starts out pretty well empty. You're gonna be transferring around 20 wires. That's just to the IN1, which is your main kind of engine loom to the body. And then there's a few other ones you'll be transferring wires to as well. So this took a good four days probably to get my head around and get the wiring in. Now that I've done it, I could probably do it in a weekend but it definitely took a lot of time to get familiar with um, exactly what I needed to do uh, and work out the pinouts. So allow a bit of time for this. This is definitely the scary part, but it is achievable. Here you go, so I'm just at the passenger side battery terminal, the positive terminal, and we've got the 1HZ alternator loom. And then here we have the FTE alternator loom. So you can actually just go in here and you should be able to take it off the back of that and unplug it there. That's the HZ loom. And then the FT loom is just literally gonna plug and play into that. And then that one on the positive. Henry, what the heck are you doing back there? Now I'm skipping forward a fair way here because this wiring took me a long time to get my head around and get finished. But once we did that, we topped up the fluids, red coolant, uh, 1540 engine oil, power steering fluid, all the good stuff, and we we're ready for a first crank. Right. so if you're watching this line, are you? Really you want? Just uh, particularly behind the glove box. So that wire there is definitely a fault of my own that I got wrong and I did rectify that later. I don't know. Please don't catch on fire. Cool. All right, now stop. I have to, I haven't got any fuel going there. And this was on purpose, of course, just in case it fired straight away. You really want to splash some oil around your engine and turbo before it cranks and fires for the first time. 
The following 27 hours of cranking with no fire, however, was not intentional. Where's that even coming from? <laughs> oh God. All right. Yep. Come on, I know you fired. Stop lying to me. Oh, come on. Oh, why? Come on. I'm sure that none of you will be surprised when I say that there is a fair bit of troubleshooting involved when it comes to wiring like this. Righto, clutching at straws a bit here. Just went to make sure it was in neutral. Come on. Same issue. So after a lot of trial and error, a fair bit of reading up and a few phone calls with Brian, thanks Brian from PDI, uh, I actually realized that I needed to use the immobilizer from the 100 series and replace it with my immobilizer and then wire all of that into the ECU, which wasn't quite as scary as it sounded. Brian provided a really awesome pin out um, and then we put that in and gave it a go. The immobilizer is this yellow box that sits up the top. It actually sits up there. So it's in behind the driver's vent. So we'll be pulling that down, swapping it out for the 100 series one and splicing the wiring through. Madness, but. There was more talking and drinking in this video than there was wiring, but you get the idea. Along with that immobilizer, you will need to swap over the key barrel and obviously the key from the 100 series. <laughs> so that one should then just slot back in, I suppose. Oh. New key. And it turns the car on. Okay. So that's that button there for anyone. Not that one. It's that one. Right. Mobilizer light flashing. Key in. Mobilizer light off. Check engine light, but it is running. You beauty. Hey. Happy world. Oh. <laughs>
Can't even tell you. <laughs> no, a lot of undone fuel pumping there. No doubt. It was a pretty incredible feeling having this thing running after the amount of blood, sweat and swear words that had gone into the build, not to mention the cost of it. Uh, but there was nothing left to do but take it for its first little drive. I'm stoked that everyone else found my conversion issues absolutely hilarious. In the next and final part of this FTE conversion, we take the gearbox back out. The reconditioned box with no second and fourth gear. Can't say I'm happy about it. Install a big intercooler. And get this thing ready for its first drive on the road. Speedo's a little bit out. 